Hello and welcome back my friends to Monster Monday. On today's episode, we're going to be delving into the Monster Manual to take a look at a creature that's been around in D&D for a while. It's called the Ettercap. So let's say people that you're running an adventure and it's somewhere in the woods and there's a corruption and evil within the woods and there are spiders. Sound familiar? Yeah. Um, Etter caps are a great addition to those giant spiders that are commonly found in most every D&D campaign. And whether your event is set in a forested woodland area or maybe you wanted to do something as a dungeon crawl but you have spiders in there, an Etter cap is a nice low level mob that you could throw into the mix to kind of shake things up a little bit. And I believe, once again, I have hacked this monster, and I will successfully share my ideas with you about scaling them up and making them a little more interesting in your longer-term adventures and campaigns. So let's dig right in. Ettercaps are humanoid spiders that tend to feed and watch over spiders the way a shepherd oversees a flock of sheep. They layer deep in remote forests. Fine strands of silk stream from glands in an ettercap's abdomen letting it shoot sticky strands of webbing to bind, entrap, or strangle its victims. It can also use its webbing to fashion elaborate snares and nets, which often festoon its lair. When travelers and explorers venture into an ettercap's territory, the ettercap stalks them. Some meet their end, wandering blindly into traps or sections of forest enclosed by webs. Others, the ettercap garrots with strands of web or envenoms with its poisonous bite. Though they dwell in the wilds, ettercaps have no desire to live in harmony with nature. A forest infested with ettercaps transforms into a gloomy place, choked with webs and infested with giant spiders, giant insects, and other sinister predators. Creatures that wander too far into such a wood are soon lost in a maze of webs that dangle with the bones and lost treasures of the ettercaps' victims. Ettercaps are natural enemies of fey creatures. They the foul creatures set web snares to catch sprites and pixies, which they hungrily devour, and will encase a dryad's tree in webbing in a vain attempt to trap the dryad. Otherwise, timid fey will sometimes approach outsiders for help in dealing with an ettercap infestation, being ill-equipped to deal with the malevolent creature themselves. Ettercaps are kind of cool boss mobs for underlean creatures, right? But let's, let's take some examples, shall we? Let's think about how you could use an Etter Cap. Um, in a low-level campaign, they're, they're only challenge rating two, so they kind of would make for a big bad end guy for a low-level group, right? Suppose that your group is looking through the forest for um, the mysterious reason why um, so many travelers along the woodland road have been abducted, or uh, the mayor's daughter has been stolen, or the magistrate's son has gone missing, or the magistrate himself or herself. Whatever. Um, somehow the adventurers find themselves in these woods. They get attacked by giant spiders. They defeat the giant spiders. Maybe the woods are just something they're traveling through in your campaign to go somewhere else. However you get them there, however you get them there, you have them in here. And now maybe there are pit traps and web traps and other kinds of nefarious things. And though they don't realize it, they've kind of gone into this maze, this labyrinth within the woods that have, that have been uh, defiled and despoiled by the, the presence of evil. Now, if I were running this, I would think for a low level thing, this Etter Cap would be kind of, you know, the one guarding the missing person or missing people, um, or the one that they would defeat ultimately to, uh, you know, obtain a whole bunch of treasure. In a mid-level campaign, I think all you'd need to do is just add multiple Etter Caps. And really, in, in the flavor text here, there's nothing barring you from doing that. It's not like there can only be one within a 50-mile range. So you could have like a pack of four Etter Caps who kind of run this forest, and they have you know, multiple different uh, minions who kind of dwell within there in, in, in the form of giant spiders. And other creatures too. You, you could have you know, a dire wolf in there if you really wanted to give a mid-level party something interesting to mix it up. Um, even at low level or mid-level, you can add in other kind of creatures that work well with this defiled forest theme, you know, like blights, for example. 
Um, I mean, even like goblins, you know, there are a lot of options. But I think the Edder Cap is kind of cool because it is a big, dumb creature. Um, and it's not big like large size. It's a medium-sized monstrosity. But it is dumb. It has an intelligence of seven. So it's not like the smartest thing out there. But territorial-wise, I think it would make a great encounter, right? Now, another way that you could scale these up. Suppose that you wanted to throw your higher level group, some, some group that's 10th to 15th level, into a forest or they're, they're going through a forest on their way to somewhere else. You know, sure, you could, you could throw some, some big mobs at them, but it might be kind of cool to have them get attacked by a pack of Ettercaps that have somehow been magically enhanced by a greater evil within this blighted and defiled forest. Uh, perhaps this forest has been taken over by some dr dragon, you know, not an ancient, but just a, an adult dragon of note. And, you know, the Edder Caps kind of serve the will of the dragon and, and they bring the dragon like offerings of captured humans and stuff um, and captured fae to eat. And then the dragon gives them a portion of that as their like leftovers and their reward, right? So they're like faithful servants of a greater dread. Or, you know, maybe instead of a dragon, a vampire. I don't know. But somehow you can make these Edder Caps work. And you could scale them pretty easily, just like all my scaling techniques. Take a look at the armor class, um, take a look at the hit points, or give their powers a little more of a significant boost. Let's take a look at the stat block so we can understand how the basic editor cap works, and then we'll go into some more ideas for how we can use them and scale them in your adventures. So the editor cap has an armor class of 13. It has 8d8 plus 8 hit points, so that averages out in the book to about 44. And again, both of those things are easy to scale up or down. If you wanted to throw an editor cap or two editor caps at a low level party, just drop their hit points down, make their AC 10 and give them, you know, 30 hit points instead of 8d8 plus 8. Their speed is interesting. So they have a movement speed of 30 and a climbing speed of 30. The picture kind of shows them as these weird giant torsoed bug creatures with long arms and legs and claws, so I'm guessing that they can kind of move pretty quickly and climb with those large things. They have a couple special traits that are very much related to the whole spider theme. So um, spider climb, the edder cap can climb difficult surfaces, including upside down on ceilings without needing to make an ability check. Well, if you're out in the woods, there aren't really ceilings, but you could easily make the layer of the edder cap within the woods some kind of cave or a tunnel system. Um, you know, maybe there's some hills or barrows that are nearby. So you could easily create a woodland setting that leads to a sort of dungeon crawl setting within your adventure, and you could bring the edder cap in through there. The other option is this could be an ancient forest with really tall trees. So I want you to imagine the hobbit uh, when they go through the Mirkwood and the whole party gets lost and, and they, they get entangled with the, you know, the, the spiders uh, attacking them. You know, imagine now you have an edder cap or multiple edder caps in that scenario. They might be hanging out way up high in the canopy looking down at the party and then they give a command to the spiders to attack. So just by making them a little more strategic, they could be a more deadly foe as well if you wanted to scale them up to mid-level or high level. Um, the other thing they have is web sense. While in contact with the web, the editor cap knows the exact location of any other creature in contact with the same web. So again, like an alarm system, right? The party's going through, they tripwire part of a web, and that sends a, a vibrating resonance throughout the web system. The spiders know now, the editor cap knows, and the editor cap can be strategically moving to attack. The last one is web walker. The edder cap ignores movement restrictions caused by webbing, so it can use its own webs to, to go up, to go down, to go across, you know, like a tightrope, so it can stay out of melee range, for example, if it wanted to. Now, you might be like, well, but Bill, it, it only has melee attacks. Yes, that's true, but it can do web things and entrap people and have its minions attack them while they are you know, immobilized effectively, um, and then it can move in. So a dumb editor cap, like out of the book, Intelligence 7, still has its hunting instincts, like any animal, right? It might not be smart, but it knows how to hunt its prey. 
So just because it has an intelligence of seven doesn't mean it wouldn't know how to be um, strategic in terms of hunting its prey. Now, some of the more advanced strategic moves, like, like immobilizing the party, having spiders attack on one side so it can flank on the other, that might be when you want to scale it up to mid or high level to make them a little more deadly. But let's just talk about the attacks that it has out of the book. So adder caps have two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claws. The bite attack is a plus four to hit with a reach of five feet. It does 1d8 plus two piercing damage plus 1d8 poison damage. So for a low level, that could kill some, that could kill a first level person easily. So if you wanted to scale it down a little bit, if you felt like the adder cap might TPK your party, scale it down and have it only do you know, 1d6 damage or 1d4 damage and, you know, have the poison only do 1d4 damage, as an example. Um, now, the target must succeed on a DC 11 con save or be poisoned for one minute. The creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending the effect on itself on a success. If you wanted to scale the utter caps up to make them a bit more challenging for a mid or high level campaign, have their poison do more damage. That's one enormous way that you could easily scale these up and, and throw a surprise to your more experienced players who might be used to like adder caps as being kind of a low level interaction. Um, all of a sudden, if their bite attack does 2d8 plus eight and it does 2d8 poison damage and the DC to save is 16 instead of 11, there's your big jump, there's your scale up. Claw attack is plus four to hit one target, 2d4 plus two damage. Um, so claw attack, not really that significant, um, but again, if you wanted to scale it down, just make it 1d4 for damage. If you wanted to scale it up, make it 4d4 for damage. All right, last thing here is web. So this is uh, one of those powers that recharges. Uh, you roll a d6 and on a five or six, they can do it again. If you don't roll a five or six, they can't do a web that round kind of randomizes how much they can do that. Um, it's a ranged attack, plus four to hit. The range is 30 or 60 feet, um, 30 feet within range, 60 feet's the max. One large or small creature. The creature is restrained by webbing. As an action, the restrained creature can make a DC 11 strength check, escaping from the webbing on a success. The effect ends if the webbing is destroyed. The webbing has AC 10, five hit points, resistance to bludgeoning damage, and immunity to poison and psychic damage. So the web basically is a net that captures someone. It captures a person who is affected by it. Now, that's pretty darned powerful. If your party is like levels one through three, if one of them gets snared up and they don't make their strength check, they're kind of screwed. More than likely, they're screwed. Okay, so one way that you could use an adder cap without making them completely deadly to a low level party is have the webbing have that impact. Um, I don't think the DC of, of 11 strength check is that bad, frankly, but you know, maybe, maybe it's the kind of thing where it only recharges on a six instead of a five or a six. So they can't use the webbing that often. Or, I mean, you could homebrew this and just say they can only do it once per encounter. So one person can get webbed. So you can scale it down. Now, if you wanted to scale it up, whew, I, I got ideas for you. So idea number one is you make it a recharge on a four, five, or six. So they, they got a 50-50 chance of being able to do it every round. You boost the range instead of 30-60, make it 61-20. So they could do it from really far away. And then last but not least, you just make it a more powerful web. You know, this could be a greater edder cap. And you could say greater edder caps their webbing is just a thicker, more powerful material, and it requires a strength DC 16 to escape from it instead of DC 11. Those are a bunch of different ways that you can scale down or scale up to use an editor cap in a low level, mid level, or high level campaign. But let's talk about story. I always like to try to bring it around a story. So why are the editor caps here? What are they doing there? I think when you think of, again, as inspiration, I, I like to look at things that might be familiar. So when you think of like the Mirkwood, well, why was this once green wood now turned into a defiled and despoiled place? Well, it wasn't just the presence of spiders, right? There was something magical, something supernatural perhaps 
that was kind of driving away all the, na all, all the positive forces of nature and, and allowing the evil forces to kind of seep in and pollute and infect and infest. Um, and I think that's one variation. Now, you have plenty of options to choose from. An evil dragon is a great way to make a, a wooden forest land, maybe with a bog or a swamp, into kind of a dreaded area, you know. And you could build this into your lore, and you could say, like, once upon a time, this, the, the Carafa forests were abundant and verdant and, and prosperous, and, but then a, a strange seeping fog began to appear, and green lights would glow at nighttime, and moss grew over the roots, and, uh, you know, and you kind of describe how slowly over time this forest became sort of, like, defiled, you know? Now... What's the defile? Well, it, it could, like I said, it could be a dragon. It could be a vampire. It could be some other undead. Maybe some incorporeal undead. Maybe ghosts of some kind. Maybe demons. Maybe it's a cult or a coven of witches. Who knows? Your choice, though, is that you create something, some bad thing that has basically come to these lands and has taken over these forests, these once great forests. Maybe there's something magical in the forest. Maybe the water that comes from this natural spring and used to fill this pond was sacred and somehow had some kind of special healing properties. And people used to like make pilgrimages there and, and leave offerings to the gods. And there was a grove of druids who protected it. And then they got wiped out by this mysterious evil. So you start to create these stories and it all goes back to why. Why are the utter caps there? Why are the spiders there? Why are the other bad things there? And you have to tar start kind of taking these little idea seeds and planting them. And the next thing you know, you have a whole adventure, nay, possibly even a campaign. Because at lower level, mid level, when the characters go in there, they wipe out the spiders, they kill the utter caps, they get a bunch of tre treasure, they rescue the captured travelers or the children of the mayor, whatever you used. And everybody thinks that everything's gonna be okay. And maybe for a time it is, but then they don't pay attention to what's going on. They're not vigilant. And what happens is angry spirits return and they begin raising new things. And this time they've, they've learned that they cannot so easily hold this forest land um, without more reinforcements. So now they bring in other creatures. Maybe they mix in um, spiders with dire wolves and edder caps, and now you throw in some additional undead, depending on what level. You know, maybe there are a few whites in there and some zombies and some skeletons. Who knows? But the point is, is that you, you, you take an edder cap and you reverse engineer it. You take a monster and you figure out a story by asking questions, by saying, why are these edder caps here? Who do they serve? How are they sustaining themselves? How is their existence in here impacting neighboring communities or travelers through the area? Why would people, if this place were so horrible and defiled and dangerous, why would people even go through it? Well, you have to create that too. Maybe it's like the only way to get from point A to point B without going 150 miles around. So people take their chances and they go through the scary forest. None of these are rocket science ideas. I am just sharing with you ideas from many different stories, from real lore and from, from books and movies. That's all. You just take little seeds, mix them together, and, and remash it into your own thing. It's, it's, it's a kind of creativity called synthesis. DJs do it. Music producers do it. Sample, 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 sample. Couple things here, new beats, and boom, brand new song. So. That's my DMing tip for you. That's Edder Caps, and I think they're really cool. You should use them. And if you have used them, share how you've used them in the comments below, because I get a kick out of reading those things. If you've been a player and your characters encountered Edder Caps, tell us all about it. We like to know your ideas. Share with the community. And welcome. Thank you, as always, for enjoying this video, for liking, for subscribing. And if you're interested in helping support Bill Allen World even more, you could always go check out Patreon because every dollar counts. I appreciate you. The community appreciates you. And happy gaming, my friends.
Come on, I, I have a lot of things to do today. I drank that Diet Pepsi way too fast. What if you were the DM, but the only thing you said was either no or okay? Did I hit? Okay. Is there anything down there? No. Well, hello, it's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things. And also you could watch Bill eat food and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.